Hey, good to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you. How's it going? How's everybody doing? Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Coach Sirianni is always talking about connecting, and I know you had good relationships with the receivers, with the tight ends, with the other guys on offense. Um, as quarterbacks coach, how much kind of benefit to you is that now that you've, you've got relationships throughout the building and the offense? Yeah, I think it's huge. Uh, Nick obviously always talks. That's one of our main core values is, is the ability uh, to connect with each other. And, uh, you know, this being my third year here and my first year spending a lot of time in that protection meeting with the O-line and uh, just being out on the field with the guys that practice, uh, I think we, you know, have been able to, uh, we've been able to build a really, really great rapport and a great connection. And uh, it's been a seamless transition to this point. When you're on the practice field, do you have a plan, like where you're going to spend your time? Yeah, you know, I think you're very, very intentional about uh, connecting and, and having meaningful conversations. So, you know, I don't think it's one where I like meticulously plan out, okay, I'm spending the day with the tight ends. I think, uh, you know, having those connections be really organic is what makes them um, meaningful. And, you know, for example, today I spent some time in the, in the O-line meeting room uh, and hung out with those guys a little bit today. So I think being able to, uh, to de you know, to uh, delegate your time and you know, have the appropriate time on task with, with each position to make sure that uh, things are getting covered that you need to get covered, and uh, you know, you're building those relationships uh, throughout the building. Brian, taking over the play calling is going to be a big part of this for you. Done it at the college level. What, what are some of the two or three traits that most encapsulate what you have to do to be a successful play caller? Yeah, I think uh, you know, a lot of play calling, obviously, is is planned throughout the course of the week. So I think just the the, the way you structure your week uh, to put yourself and and put the players in the best position to do what they do well. But when you talk about in game, I think um, it becomes a little bit of art and science, right? You know, it's it's a little bit of a feel of you know feeling when to call certain things and uh, you know being able to hunt and and, and find matchups that you like throughout the course of the game. So, you know, that ability to have that feel, that ability, you know, to adjust quickly is something that, that really shows up, you know, compared to the college game because you don't get as many plays. And so, you know, your adjustments have to come fairly rapidly in terms of, you know, after the first, after the second series to see how, how teams are playing you. And uh, you got to be ready to roll with those adjustments and, uh, and not be a play behind. First time talking to you since uh, you guys got DeAndre Swift as well as uh, Rashad Payne. How do you see them fitting into your vision of the offense? Well, um, you know, both of those guys, both Rashad and DeAndre, um, have a very unique skill set. And they're different types of backs. Um, you know, I think you know one of the things it does is it allows us to be very, very flexible with how we want to deploy them. Um, and you know, I think. The sign of a good good staff and, and how you want to operate is you want to give your guys the best opportunity to do what they do well and, uh, you know, not fitting a square peg into a round hole. So, you know, cutting out pieces of the offense that are unique to their skill set and what they do well and finding ways to utilize it and, uh, and highlight it within the normal flow uh, of the game. How were your like the season you had some options. What, what made you want to stay here? Yeah, well, I, you know, the one thing that I can say about that is uh, this is an unbelievable organization. And, uh, you know, obviously I haven't been to a bunch of different places. I don't have a ton of experience in this league. But um, at the end of the day, when you're in this profession, I think people matter. And it's still a relationship business, and it's still about people. And I can't say enough great things about the people in this building, uh, you know, starting at the top of Mr. Lurie all the way down to T-Roy. And, you know, I think um, – those relationships and, and the type of the type of camaraderie um, that the players have, that the staff has, um, is something that's really, really special. And uh, you know, I'm I'm very, very eager uh, to be a part of that. How does your um, relationship or your time spent with Jalen change now? Yeah, well, you know, I think we have a great quarterback coach in, in Alex Tanny, and uh, you know, he has a he has that, that room, and, uh, you know, I'll still be in there from time to time, but 
I think the relationship uh, that Jalen and I have, you know, won't really change in terms of, you know, how we get ready to approach the game. Uh, our relationship off the field won't change. You know, I think, you know, me being in this position now um, will just allow us to even go deeper in our relationship and, uh, you know, and, and have that, that camaraderie in terms of what do you like, uh, how, this is how we're going to attack, and, and just being able to, to have those conversations to be ready to make adjustments as we need to. What's the biggest, what's the biggest thing you learned from Shane about play calling on game day? Um, I think, you know, Shane is obviously a great play caller. Um, you know, I think we see the game very, very similar in terms of how to attack defense, you know, uh, you know, what pops in our brain versus structure. You know, there, there were very, you know, many times throughout the course of the game where we were on the same page of what we needed to get to. Um, you know, but I think Shane, you know, had a great demeanor. He was, he was very, very uh, meticulous in, you know, his weekly routine of what he needed to see uh, in order to get himself ready to call the game, of how he studied the call sheet. And, you know, some of the bl the best play callers, you know, that I've been around, you know, are, are guys who have that great feel. And, you know, you have these big call sheets, but you can just kind of feel the flow of the game, of, of what the game needs uh, at that certain point. And, uh, you know, you're, you're able to, uh, to make those adjustments quickly. Given your uh, – Well, you know, I think I always say this, that, you know, coaches are just grown-up players. And, you know, we, we ask our players all the time. We talk about iron sharpening iron and Lane Johnson having to go against Hassan Reddick, uh, you know, and Brandon Graham having to go against Jordan Mulata. It's, it's no different uh, with the staff. And, I'm, you know, I think Coach Sirianni, do, Coach Sirianni does a great job of, uh, in our staff meetings, of doing that and, you know, clinic in each other and bouncing ideas off of each other uh, and ways to attack certain offenses, ways to attack certain defenses. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for Sean. Uh, you know, in the short time that, that I've spent with him, he's incredibly bright. Uh, you know, he's incredibly detailed, and, and uh, I'm excited. Um, excited for his opportunity as well. Given your long history with Jalen, what kind of Thoughts and memories uh, ran through you when, when he got the, the contract extension recently? Um, I was extremely happy for him. You know, he's worked extremely hard throughout, you know, his entire football life. And, you know, I, I think Mr. Leary, I think Howie, I think all these guys kind of mentioned this, that, you know, it's not the end of a story. It's just the beginning of, of his journey. And, um, you know, for, for him, you know, like he said, it doesn't change but the weather. So it's about – you know, now that all that stuff is behind us, you know, it's about continuing. How do we continue to make ourselves uh, better, you know, become a better coach, become a, a better player, become a better offense? Um, and we're just uniquely just trying to find ways to uh, to do that and, and do it in a consistent manner where, uh, where, you know, we can make people proud. How, how much better do you see Jalen getting, especially, you know, going back to your relationship, like how, how well you've grown? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll never, you know, I, I said this plenty of times to him. You know, he said it himself is that, you know, we'll never put a ceiling on what he can accomplish. And, uh, you know, one of the messages that we spoke about to the offense was, yeah, there, there's no ceiling, um, but let's have an extremely high floor too. And, uh, you know, have a, a level of play that's really consistent um, at a high level. And then his talent can take over, you know. So I think uh, with Jalen, nothing that he ever does will surprise me. Uh, he works like a madman. Uh, he's very, very diligent. He's very intentional about what he wants. Um, and that, that shows on a daily basis in, in how he operates. Do a couple more. You mentioned Alex a little bit earlier. What does he bring to your former position? Well, I think, you know, Alex has played in his league for a really long time. And uh, – I think everybody has unique experiences uh, that help them get to the point that they are. And, uh, you know, not only for Jalen, but even for the rest of the room, you know, for, for Ian and for Marcus, um, 
and for Tanner. So all of those guys uh, will be able to utilize Alex um, in a way that will help them get better. And, you know, Alex is a very bright coach. He's, he's a superstar. You know, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to watch his career take off, and, and there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, that he'll do great. What do you find to be the, the biggest change in your sort of day-to-day life as a coach? Yeah, you know, the, the way we've done it, there, there hasn't been, you know, much change other than, you know, some responsibilities in terms of, like, scripting and stuff like that and, you know, presenting. But I think Coach Sirianni has the, the organization and the program set up in a way to where, uh, you know, he challenges coaches, you know, to improve as much as players. And I think when you, when you have that mindset as a coach – of how can I continually uh, get better? Do I have a growth mindset? Am I finding ways every single year uh, to do something just a little bit better? Um, you know, I think that, you know, collectively makes us a better staff. Nick has said in the past that this is the Eagles offense, no matter who's, who's calling the plays. How are you going to put your stamp on it that's, that's kind of unique to you? Or is this going to look the way it did under Shane and, and it would if you're a head coach somewhere? Well, I, th- I think the, the beauty of football, and, you know, we talked about this with the offense, is that each team has a one-year lifespan. And, you know, I think one of the things that's Im- important is that you have to continually evolve each and every year. You know, there's – you know, we obviously had a lot of success on offense last year. Um, but we also lost some pieces. So that's the challenge of it is to, to find new pieces, to integrate them in – and to find ways to uh, continually improve. So I think, you know, that's, that's the beauty and that's the challenge of you can't remain the same. So you're going to have to find ways to uh, tweak. Now, the, the base and the core of our offense here, I'm sure it will always be, be that way as long as, uh, as long as Coach Sirianni is around. He's very, very involved. Um, he's a great offensive mind as well. So, um uh, you know, I think but us as a staff just trying to find new ways to uh, challenge ourselves, to challenge our players, to become a little bit better, uh, and to find maybe uh, a better way to do something than we did last year. I think that's where the improvement is. All right. Last one, guys. I'm sorry. Your background before you came here was, up, was under Dan Wall and, and, and in that offense. Are there influences in terms of that offense and what the Eagles do and the way you call games, or is it independent of that? Yeah, I think – you know, you've seen our offense kind of evolve, you know, over the, the first two years here. Um, you know, I think one of the things is is you have to be uh, well-versed in many different schemes. You have to be well-versed in many different types of quarterbacks. And you do what your players do well. Um, and so, you know, I think the challenge for us is to build an offense to, to where, uh, you know, we're making defenses cover – the entire length and the entire width of the field and uh, and be able to play, you know, play on our terms. All right. Thanks. Thank you.